Today is Sunday Fun Day and I'm showing you two different ways to make a farmhouse style word sign using Dollar Tree boards. Let's get started. For my projects today, I'm using two of the tall board signs from the Dollar Tree. I've had these sitting around since Valentine's and Easter last year, but they typically have these for every season, so I just grab a few anytime I see them. Sometimes these signs have holes for the twine hanger and sometimes they're just stapled. I actually prefer the holes because you can fill them with wood filler or spackling like I'm doing here, which is easier to conceal than the ridges left over by staples. This first board I'm covering with Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. I got a new phone and somehow it didn't record when I painted the back of the board, which will actually be the front of my sign. So here you see me painting over the design. I don't always paint over the back, but I'm possibly going to be selling these at a fall festival. So I'm not only painting over the design on the back, but I'm also going to cover it with butcher paper. That just gives it a more finished look. Then I gave it a distressed look by lightly brushing on the granite color by Apple Barrel Paints. I usually use the beige mineral color from Waverly for this, but my board is going to be black and white, so I thought this light gray color would go better. I used a dry brush and dabbed most of the paint off before swiping onto the board. I moved in a back and forth motion in the same direction so that it looked like the board had been sanded. Then I applied the paint a little thicker around the edges and blended it with a baby wipe, which gave the distressing a softer look. Next it was time to add the lettering. I used my favorite word swag app to create the word blessed and I'm using my Arteza carbon paper to transfer the lettering to the board. I chose a block lettering for this version of the sign and for other word swag users I think the font was called Key West. I do use my normal printer to print out the word, which is obviously bigger than normal printer paper. A trick I use to ensure everything is perfectly sized and spaced is to crop the word as a photo and then trim it into parts, but I overlap by one letter. So for example, I did one that had B-L-E, one with E-S-S, -S, and one with S-E-D. Then when I was resizing the files in my word processing program, I just made sure that they were all resized to the same height. And after printing, I lined up the overlapping letters and taped the paper together. Once the word was transferred to the board, I just used a silver metallic paint pen from the Dollar Tree to fill in the lettering. With this having a black chalk paint as the base, the silver paint pen doesn't have really a metallic look to it at all. I think it actually looks like white chalk that's a little faded, which is perfect for this distressed look that I'm going for. While I'm filling in, I'll also mention that this video is part of the Sunday Fun Day Challenge hosted by Yanni and Diane from Deco Easy and Trish and Kay from The Crafting Cousins. I'll link both of their channels in the description box below as well as the playlist for the challenge. So be sure to check out their channels and then hop to the playlist to see what everyone comes up with. And you may have also noticed that the word is not centered. It's actually upwards from the middle, which would typically have my OCD sirens going off, but I actually did that on purpose. The lettering was too wide for any kind of embellishment at the side, so I just placed the word a little higher so that I would have space below it to add a little something. So here you see me adding some black and white buffalo check ribbon, which I just hot glued around the back. Then I was using a ruler to try to find the middle for my embellishment, but I could have just saved myself some time and lined it up with the center of the first S and blessed. I'll be sure to remember that if I make a few more of these same signs. I was trying to decide if I wanted to add a bow, but I ended up adding some little faux time sprigs I got from Walmart. I made a swag of sorts by having two stems out in each direction with the stems meeting in the middle. And finally, I added a little shoelace bow to the middle. It may be small, but it serves two purposes. Of course, it looks pretty, but it also hides the ends of the stems and the glue I used to attach them. Win-win. And here it is. I don't do a lot of signs in black, but I really love how this turned out. The buffalo check ribbon and the greens really make it pop, and the silver paint pen was a good choice too, I think. And now for the second board, I covered it with the plaster color by Waverly. I do prefer the plaster color to the white because it gives it a more weathered or aged look, 
which is perfect for these distressed wood signs. For the distressing, I used my favorite mineral color by Waverly. These two colors look amazing together. In fact, I use them in a lot of different projects, sometimes even in the reverse order too with the mineral color on the bottom. In fact, I just used them in my last video for my Magnolia home dupe, so I'll link that above if you'd like to check it out. For this sign, I wanted to use a script font, and the one I chose in WordSwag is called Penmanship. Then I used the same method to transfer the word to the board with my Arteza carbon paper. I've definitely mentioned this paper before. I'm a lefty, so I tend to drag my hand, which can cause some papers to release some of the carbon onto the project where you don't want it. This Arteza paper was definitely the first brand of carbon paper that didn't result in any smudges, so I mention it at any chance I get. I'm using a gold metallic paint pen from Dollar Tree to fill in the lettering for this one and it does have a good sheen to the gold which I really like mixed with the distressed look of the board. Something about the feminine but still rustic that I like. So I mentioned briefly that I've decided to have a booth at a fall festival for my church so I'd love everyone to weigh in on these and share which you like the best and why. Or maybe you think a combination of the two would work. Definitely let me know what you think. I'm going to try some other words and phrases too, like grateful, thankful, bless this home. So also let me know if you have any other words or phrases to suggest. I probably should have mentioned that I ended up placing the word to the right edge of the board so that I would have room to add some embellishment to the left side. I just wrapped jute twine around the board about 10 times and glued it down in the back. Then I cut apart the same faux time sprigs from Walmart and stuck them behind the twine. Once I had the placement I liked, I added a little glue to the end of each sprig before tucking it back in. And then the project was complete. And here it is. I know I always say this, but I really love how this turned out. I think the combination of the gold lettering with the distressed board and rustic twine really make for a great combination. And I'm finding it hard to pick which one I like the best, so definitely let me know in the comments which one you like. Thanks for joining me today. If you found me from the Sunday Fun Day playlist, I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with my content. We're headed to Florida with some friends soon, but I'm hoping to get another video in this week before we leave. I think I'll show you what I snagged from a thrift pop-up sale I went to last week, so stay tuned for that. See you next time. Bye!